are so glad everybody came. I really appreciate you for taking the time, staff, students, parents, families, community members. My name is Susan Ladd. I'm principal of Henry Hudson School number 28. Welcome to our first public hearing on receivership. So before we go into the receivership process, I just want you to know our vision. Our vision is we build on every child's strength every day to ensure college and career readiness. So what does that mean to us? Sorry. It means that we build relationships with all our students. We know them by face, by name. We try to know their families. We worry about attendance because we know students who are not in school aren't learning. So we really focus on our insurance, our attendance. Rigor and engagement, are we offering them a balanced approach so that they have math, English, language arts at a rigorous level so that they can go on to college? And life skills, are we getting them ready for careers? So our motto is every child, every day. A little bit about 28 school. We have 669 students, most of whom are Hispanic. This group right here is the Hispanic and the yellow. All right, what are we going to do tonight? We're going to talk about receivership, the purpose of a public hearing. What is receivership? We're going to look at our school specifically so you can learn our data and know how we're going to try to tackle the problem. And we're going to offer you a time to give us feedback so you can engage with us and help us make 28 a better place. I'm going to pause for a minute while the interpreters are ready. So for the past three years, we have been considered a struggling school, and the state has required us to make rapid achievement gains. You have two years to make that growth, and the state has given the superintendent the job of being our receiver. Right now, our superintendent is interim superintendent, Dan Lowengard, and then if they hire a new superintendent, he will take over. If our school does not meet the improvement targets within two years, the district is required to appoint an outside receiver approved by the state. And an outside receiver could be a college, a nonprofit business organization, anybody that has an educational background that can help to move the school. And an appointed receiver will have broad authority to set and manage school improvement plans. We do not want to go that route. The state is going to give us some specific data points that we need to improve on. We have not yet received those data points, but they should be released this month. This is the second round of receivership. So that we are in cohort two. Rochester had five schools come off the receivership list. They will come off in June. And then you can see the schools that are new coming into receivership at the bottom. We do not want to be on this list. We want to be on the top list in two years. We want to come off this list. So what do we have to do as a school and a community? By February 18th, the state has said that all receivership schools must communicate the school's status of receivership. We've done that already through robocalls, notes home. It's on our webpage. Establish the school community engagement team. We've done that. But if you're interested in being on our school engagement team, there's a yellow paper on your table, and you can fill one out. And then we have to conduct a public hearing, gathering feedback from the community. And that's what we're doing tonight. So the purpose of the public hearing is to let everyone know our current status and have an opportunity to look at our current school improvement plan. Those are on the table. Then we're going to engage with you and talk about 28 school and ways that you think that we can improve. After we 
we gather your information, the community engagement team is going to create a new receivership plan. That plan has to be submitted by the state by March 14th. So what is the state looking at? The state's looking at these six areas. English language arts scores. So in the spring, we give the ELA assessment for grades three through eight. They're also looking at our math scores for grades three through eight. The science exam is only given in grades four and eight. So they'll look at those scores. The English language proficiency scores are scores that students receive if they are non-English speakers. We give them a test called the nicest slot at the end of the year. And the state is going to measure their growth. And as a school community, they're looking at our suspension data and our chronically absent student data. And I will give you some background on where we are as a school. So where are we? Attendance. Of all the metrics that the state measures, this is the one where we need to show the most growth. So what does the state measure? The state measures students who are missing more than 10% of instructional days in grades one through eight who have been rostered in school for at least 10 days. So last year, as a school, our chronic att attendance percentage was 37.9%. That means 37.9% of our students missed more than 18 days of school. That's too many. But if you look down here at our subgroup, you can see that we have a lot of work to do. Some things that we do already, we offer student incentives. We've brought the center of attention for the teachers on attendance, so they're more focused on attendance in their class. And parent outreach, so we have a new attendance clerk that we're able to depend on to call parents, to reach out, to help find reasons why um, students are coming to school. Our school climate, we're looking at our suspension data. This is over three years. So you can see, in 16, 17, three years ago, we had a total of 167 suspensions. Last year, we reduced that almost in half to 91. And this year, we're only at 50. So we're starting to show some growth. Some things we noticed about 28 school was that a lot of our suspensions came from students new to the building in the older grades, grades five, six, seven, and eight. So we created student ambassadors who are working with our new students to greet them and help them buy into the 28 way. We're trying to increase our rigor and our hands-on learning opportunities so students are engaged in the learning and want to come to school. Also, we've initiated the Howler Health Zone, which involves Center for Youth, Pathways to Peace, and Rochester City School Social Workers to help students solve problems before they become suspendable incidents. Our ELA data. The state is measuring students that score a two, a three, or a four on the test. Students who score a one are considered not proficient. A two is somewhat proficient, a three is meeting the standards proficient, and a level four is above standard, highly proficient. This, this is an area that the state is measuring. So you can see over the last three years, we've increased from 29.6 to 31 to 39.1% of our students scoring a two, a three, or a four. And you can see we've increased our students who have actually considered passing the test from 4.2 to 6.9 to 12.5. So we are showing growth. We just need to show more growth. The state wants us to reduce these level ones. You can see we've started three years ago from 70 down to last year's 60. 
still too many. Our math data, you can see we've increased from 20 to 23 to 26% proficient um, on levels two through four. Three and four, we've increased, but our level ones are still too high. We need to reduce those level ones. Something that we are proud of at 28 School is that we offer our eighth graders an opportunity to take Regents exams and leave our school entering ninth grade with credit. Eighth graders can take the Algebra One and the Living Environment Regents exam, and they can take ninth grade Spanish. If students do this and they pass, they can earn three credits and two Regents starting ninth grade ahead of their peers. Last year, 25 of 26 students earned the Algebra One region. We're very proud of that number. 14 of 26 earned the Living Environment region. Again, that means 14 students left us with a minimum of one region exam. Next year, all eighth graders will take the Algebra region. So we are preparing our current sixth graders and seventh graders so that we can give all our eighth graders the region and they will leave us with at least one region and one credit. The state is also measuring the science exam. Again, the science exam is given in grades four and grade eight. You can see that in grade four, we are considered highly proficient for levels two through four and passing. So our fourth grade is last year, had a 75% passing rate on the science four exam. Our problem in science comes in ninth, in eighth grade. You can see that last year, while we had 51% score a two, a three, or a four, only 9% actually passed the test with the ninth, with the three or four. So what are we gonna do? That's where we're gonna involve you so we can build a new plan. So we're going to engage in conversation around the school's school improvement plan called a school comprehensive education plan or a SEP plan. You are going to rotate through the tables for each of the tenants of the plan. There are five tenants. Tenant one is not listed because tenant one is what the district is going to do to support us. Tenant two said that leaders effectively use evidence-based systems and structures to examine and improve critical individual and school-wide practices as defined in the school plan. So what does that mean? It means that as school leaders, we focus on systems that improve the school as a whole. We ensure that all our decisions are based on the needs of the students more than on the needs of the adults. And what kind of instructional leadership are we offering our staff? Tenant three is going to talk about curriculum. The school leader ensures and supports the quality implementation of a systematic plan of rigorous and coherent curricula appropriately aligned to the common core learning standards <coughs> that is monitored and adapted to meet the needs of the student. What does that mean? <laughs> It means that the materials that we use, that the teachers choose to use as a building, what we choose to use, the materials are culturally relevant. They're rigorous. And that we assess them so that we know how well they're doing. And we progress monitor them throughout the course of the way so we know if students are falling behind. Tenant four. School and teacher leaders ensure that instructional practices are organized around annual, unit, and daily lesson plans that address student goals and needs. What does that mean? It means that the teachers are being very intentional with the decisions that they make every single day, every moment of every day. We know that every minute matters, and every decision a teacher makes needs to be in the best interest of the student. Lesson planning, we offer them opportunities to lesson plan as a team, as well as as a vertical team, so that their planning is intentional and offers a rigorous curriculum. But we also wanna make sure that it's differentiated. 
That means that it meets the needs of every child in their class, so they're not teaching to all the kids the same material. They're individualizing the material to meet the needs of the students. Ten and five, when you get to this table, what are you going to talk about? You're going to talk about our suspension data. You're going to talk about school climate. How do students feel when they come into school, right? We offer restorative practices so that students can fix a problem that they've created and everyone feels like the problem has been resolved. We encourage every adult in the building to build strong relationships with the students. And it's my goal for every staff to know every child by face and name. And finally, when you get to 10 and 6, table 6, we will talk about family and community engagement. The school atmosphere is welcoming and fosters a feeling of belonging and trust, which encourages families to freely and frequently engage with the school, leading to increased student success. So what are some things we do already? We use Class Dojo. Class Dojo is a app-based program so that teachers and parents can communicate through a text messaging system. And I can communicate with every parent who's on Dojo with school-wide messages, pictures, videos, and important notices. Invitational practices. Is our office welcoming? When you call, is my office staff welcoming to you? And are there opportunities for parents to participate? So we know we have a PTO, and if you're interested in joining that, you can see any of the staff members here. We have school-based planning team where you can engage in the instructional decision making that we make at 28 School. And you can engage with um, the community engagement team, which is going to focus on the receivership status of 28 School and work very hard to get us off the list in two years' time. All right, so if at the end of this meeting you don't feel like your voice was heard or you forgot something or you learned something new and you want to share, we have a new website, a new email address that you can email me and this comes to me directly and it also goes to central office. And we can talk about if you have any additional feedback. <laughs>